We've seen this growing wave of ethno-nationalism worldwide in recent years, or a strong belief in nationality and ethnicity at the same time. You can check my other one-minute videos for breakdowns of those concepts. All countries are multicultural to at least some extent. They include people of various ethnic identities, which are often the basis of community, and usually some of those ethnic communities enjoy more power and privilege than others. Ethno-nationalism is the belief that national borders should overlap with the imagined borders of an ethnic community, and that the ethnic community should have total control over its own political and economic affairs. This always entails at least some hostility to other ethnicities, especially minority ones, but this is almost always downplayed or denied by ethno-nationalist movements who often claim to be not racist but just patriotic. In North America, we saw this come to the forefront in 2016 when white supremacists marched on Charlottesville, Virginia, chanting a Nazi slogan, and the next day an anti-racist protester was deliberately hit by a vehicle and died. Trump fanned the flames throughout his entire term in office, and in January 21, the riot at the U.S. Capitol was very much motivated by ethno-nationalist sentiment to, to a large extent. There are other examples that span the globe since 2020. Some of them have been increasingly intertwined with conspiracy theories like COVID truthing. There's lots written on how the big social media platforms played a large role in that wave of ethno-nationalism over the past decade or so. And so many say that their more recent steps to ban particular kinds of content and specific commentators, that that was too little too late. It's all very concerning, but there are also plenty of examples of communities pushing back against this wave and standing with their most vulnerable members.